Dear ladies and gentlemen, good morning everyone and welcome to quarterly webinar for AUGA Group. Today Nasdaq Vilnius is hosted by CEO of the company Kastutis Yushus, joined by the head of finance department Eymantas Gudonis. So hello, this is Eymantas speaking and I'm going to start with the financial results of 2019. Sandvik from the top, uh, the group revenue increased by 30% in total. All segments has performed better, but the highest effect came from the sales of agriculture produce, which increased the revenue by 12 million. Next revenue increase is increasing in gross profits. Gross profits increased by 8.2 million euros, or more than two times comparing to the same period last year. Gross profits were mostly affected by also by agricultural segment, which increased the gross profit by 7 million. Mushroom, crop, mush, mushroom segment uh, increased the gross profits uh, by 0 0.7 million. And additionally, the IRE segment increased the gross profit by 0 0.5 million. About the group CBDA, in 2019, we gave two EBDA calculations in our financial statements due to implementation of new IFRS 16 standard. The new standard considered cons uh, consolidated the two de definitions of uh, uh, financial lease and operating leases and from now on um, all the operating lease agreements must also be accounted in assets and financial li liabilities and depreciated over the leasing period. Excluding the effects of IFRS 16, the EBDA increased by 7.5 million and reached 11 million in 2019, which, which is more than two times higher than the previous year when it was 3.5 million. Um, about the net profit, uh, I should say when analyzing the net profit, we should also analyze it excluding the one-off effects and changes in the accounting policies. So, excluding one of effects from the financial results of 2018, which are uh, 0 0.7 million negative effect due to termination of Argenta Engineering Purchase Agreement, and 2.2 millions uh, from uh, one of effect, from, one of positive effect from uh, sale of subsidiary uh, Karakash Agro. Both these effects had a total positive effect of 1.35 million on 2018 year, 18th year results. Um, about the 19th results, excluding IFRS 16 impact, which had a negative effect of 1 million, uh, post provision due to sanctions of National Payment Agency, which had a negative effect of almost 3 million, and accounting for employee share option plan, which had a negative effect of 0 0.24 million. Altogether, these effects had a negative effect on uh, profits of 4.3 million. Uh, taking these one-off uh, effects in mind, the group would have earned 0 0.18 million net profit during the year of 2019, compa compared to 7.33 million net loss during the same period last year. Uh, talking about our long-term financing and the financing uh, in overall, uh, we have to say that Alga Group, uh, in 2019, Alga Group issued green bonds for 20 million nominal value, which is the first fully privately owned listed entity in the Baltic states to issue, issue such green bonds. Uh, the demand of the companies offered bonds exceeded the supply. Uh, 40, 490 applicants applied for 25 million euros. Total demand by retail investors was approximately 26% of the total demand. And uh, this bond issue is one of the largest bond issues of the NASDAQ Baltic in terms of value and number of investors. 
Also, we have to say that Alga Group became the first company in the Baltic states to join the NASDAQ Sustainable Bond Network. And uh, the new NASDAQ platform is designed for investors looking for the opportunities to invest in sustainable companies. Uh, also, we have to say about the financial liability in the balance sheet, which is lower than 20 million. Uh, this is because uh, the balance sheet represents the net financing received by the company. In other words, uh, it uh, excludes it uh, uh, is lowered by the issue related expenses and discounts. Mm. Part of the bonds uh, were also uh, used in covering uh, financial borrowings from the banks and non credit institutions. Such uh, bonds uh, amounted to 8.3 million. And uh, the other ones were used to finance this working capital and R&D projects. Um, uh, in total, we have to say that uh, we, we also check our financial, analyze our financial liabilities next to our working capital. And uh, from the year of 2016 to this day, our working capital increased from 20 million to 40 million, and we were finance, financing it all with uh, short-term debt, or uh, in other line, in other words, uh, credit line facilities. So uh, now is our goal, our main mission is to lower this short short-term finance lower this short-term financing and change it with long-term financing. Oh, and if, if you would uh, look at, uh, at the table, uh, now when we issued these bonds, uh, we have a, um, Earlier we, earlier, we had a huge bullets, a hu huge, uh, uh, huge uh, uh, loan installments in uh, second to uh, fourth year. Uh, but now, but now, when we issued the bonds, we changed it from the uh, from the second year to the last year. We also have to talk about our financial lease liabilities, uh, which basically increased with the accounting of the new IFRS 16 standard. Uh, this standard, as I mentioned before, uh, made, uh, made all companies to account for uh, operating lease agreements, which in our uh, case is uh, land mostly. And um, we calculated the value of these rent agreements for 35 million and added it to our books, to financial liabilities and the assets. So excluding this uh, and talking about the financial lease agreements, which uh, is owed to financial institutions, uh, we had a decrease of 3.26 million as we mostly did not do uh, much investments in 2019. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, my name is Christo Dutiusius, I'm CEO of the company Algo Group. Uh, I want to represent uh, the main our activities uh, and my, the main our uh, cash, uh, cash flow generating the is um, is uh, crop uh, crop growing and farming and uh, yes this is quite uh, a big uh, fluctuation is happening between the seasons and why we see so big differences um, especially after uh, this two years uh, which was uh, very very hot and uh, very high droughts a normal high droughts yes, was in Lithuania uh, which is not common for uh, for our climate zone 
So uh, uh, we yes, we are presenting uh, about two main crops. Uh, we specializing how much and how we harvesting. Uh, this is a wheat uh, where we have uh, above 10,000 hectares uh, or one one third of our old all uh, the cash crops uh, is uh, in this wheat and um, and legumes which are, have a second largest uh, portion of, of the crops uh, with peas and beans uh, which are depending to the uh, class of legumes and uh, mainly these uh, these kind of crops are used uh, for uh, for wheat uh, wheat uh, is used for food and uh, feed uh, production and uh, legumes are mainly used for feed uh, processing uh, not only for ourselves uh, when we're using uh, for cows and dairy but uh, also we're exporting uh, to mainly to european markets uh, over for, for further processing in 2019 um, shortage of rain in, sp in spring and beginning of the summer as well as unusual or hot June had a negative impact on most of our cash crops, uh, yield potential, yield potential, uh, especially legumes. Uh, legumes uh, this year is was uh, we had very hot uh, June, and uh, on the moment of the flowering, uh, which is was uh, the temperatures in June is was uh, above 30 degrees, and uh, the the flowers of the of the with legumes we just was burned by by too high temperatures and we have too little amount of pots uh, and uh, why the harvest at the moment of harvesting we achieved only 1.7 tons um, of uh, legumes uh, per hectare so this is 1.7 is still is a little bit better like in 2018 when we had a harvest of 1.5 uh, but it's below the really normal uh, what is could be achievable between 2.5 and 3.3 tons uh, per hectare so uh, if you see on the graph, so legumes is also, if you on the conventionals, we see also the drop down uh, from three tons uh, to two tons. And uh, we want to mention that uh, on normal year, we can achieve to very close to conventional yields of legumes. And um, this is uh, our one of the priorities uh, uh, of the crops because uh, legumes uh, are protein sources for feed. And uh, Europe at the moment is a large importer of uh, of organic uh, organic soya soya cake, which is substitution for for our legumes. And uh, we see a big potential for growing here in Lithuania, especially that uh, the, the normal climate conditions, the the climate zone for legumes production in Lithuania is 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 very good. So the group is uh, is. is uh, improving every year uh, the technology of seeding and drilling uh, in the soil and we expect uh, that the legumes yields uh, will come back when uh, when the results uh, climate climate uh, will be closer to to normal conditions which is to belongs to our climate zone and we're talking about average uh, wheat yield this was 4.2 euro 4.2 tons per hectare in 2018-19 season compared with 2.7 in 2017-18 season and um, 4.1 ton uh, in the season 2016-2017 the, the potential of if you if you look in the graph here so you see that uh, the, our wheat uh, yield uh, is, is very close already to conventional lithuanian average yield which you see is 4.3 tons this season and um, the reason for this is, is uh, improved technology every year uh, by our farms uh, we are doing every year better soil preparations we improving quality of the soil uh, we applying um, uh, organic fertilizers which also improves quality of the soil and um, on the drought conditions uh, organic farming in wheat uh, in winter crops uh, could be less effect less affected uh, versus conventional uh, conventional farms but still uh, we see that uh, we uh, we lost uh, at least uh, 15 percent um, yield uh, this year because of drought uh, uh, but it's of, of course this was not so significant like on the on the on the legumes because uh, wheat is less uh, sensitive sensitive to, to to high temperatures and um, uh, we see uh, we see the, 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 the yield potential is uh, for wheat is much much higher like we, have, we harvested this year and uh, if uh, weather conditions will be close to normal uh, on for Lithuanian climate zone.
the group is very well prepared for uh, for 2000 season 2018 uh, 2019 2020 uh, we have mild uh, winter uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, this year and the mild winter uh, it's actually uh, it's uh, it's a uh, Sorry, this is not the slide. Okay, this slide. So it's uh, the mild winter. Uh, it's uh, have very high, good positive effect uh, on the winter crops, uh, which uh, we, at the moment we have uh, seeded drilled 14.5 thousand uh, tons hectares. This is very similar what we uh, drilled last year, but uh, the quality of the crops is, looks much better because. Uh, here uh, normally but in lithuania we have very warm winter uh, it was a lot of rain and uh, the quality for spring is uh, it looks uh, very very good and uh, we expect uh, if it will be normal conditions on 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 spring and summer we expect uh, above the average uh, yields and uh, and the, and this is uh, potential for next season is is really huge and, and good um, then, if you look, uh, come back to the to the crops uh, prices of our main uh, main cash crops. Uh, average sales sales price of wheat and legumes decreased in line that uh, they declined in the market prices. The market fluctuation is uh, is, um, it's, is exists also in organic, uh, but it's not so huge. If you see only five or four percent, and uh, crop. Uh, group uh, developed every year delivering more and more products directly to end users. Uh, it's called it, uh, feed mills, uh, food mills, uh, food processing pro companies in, in Europe. And uh, it allows us uh, to fix uh, long term contracts and uh, to be less dependent from uh, spot market uh, fluctuations. Uh, if you see our average sales price of all other cash crops, um, uh, in this part, uh, we we actually we using uh, the prices and amount of uh, crops, uh, which is very very mixed. It's oats, uh, it's oats, it's um, soya beans, uh, it, there is this sugar beets, uh, there is uh, rye, there is this, uh, barley, and there are so small amount of these crops that we are look we taking like average uh, of tonnage and uh, the the mixture uh, the mixture of the crops uh, impacting. Uh, uh, how many crops? Uh, how, ma how much of these crops uh, will be in the proportion? If, uh, if the amount of uh, the cheaper crops are in the portion larger, so that then we have uh, average prices lower. So this is this year we have uh, average price lower because we have more in proportion uh, sugar beets, which are much less price uh, versus oats or another cash crops. Um, when we look on the cost uh, for cultivating the land, uh, so we have, you see that wheat and legumes are close on the, we keep on the same uh, zero, zero, but uh, we need to uh, uh, inform that this uh, IPRS 16 has uh, had uh, here a positive impact uh, in 2019. And uh, if you exclude this IPRS 16 and compare year to year in the same uh, uh, financial uh, statements, so it will be, you need to add uh, approximately 28 euros per hectare uh, uh, cost. Uh, and when the, the, the cost uh, will be increased by 4%, um, uh, the cost uh, in the farming, uh, uh, mainly belongs uh, from how how many efforts you're doing for for, for this uh, farming operations, how many fertilizers you want to apply, and uh, this is uh, why um, why fluctuation is not always uh, uh, related to the to the to the profit margins uh, you you can generate. Sometimes you need to include more cost per hectare to get a better harvest. And uh, here uh, every time we're looking on uh, we calculating separately uh, how much we need invest. To, that means how much we need to put cost in the in the production to get a maximum uh, brutal profit per per hectare out of out of the farming. Um, so um, if you look on the, on the what we what we harvested, uh, what we what we just discussed about, we're looking for the gain uh, or let's say or brutal profit uh, per hectare of every crop, and uh, it, it's called it gain or loss on the revaluation of agricultural produce at point of harvest. And uh, this year, uh, in 2018, 2019, uh, we have significant uh, 2017 euros uh, per hectare uh, uh, revolution uh, on the point of harvest versus 2017 was minus 150. So 
So the, the difference is huge, is 360 euro per hectare on top of it. And uh, in legumes, we have still a, a negative result from uh, from the harvest because the yields was uh, is 1.7 versus 3.2 in 2018. Sorry, in 2017, which is actually the normal level for 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 our legumes, uh, but still, it's uh, the the loss is is low, lower, 73 percent lower. And uh, at the cash crops, uh, if you look here, so we uh, have uh, much more. Uh, we gained much more on other cash crops. This was uh, quite good results from uh, from rapeseed, uh, from um, from uh, sugar beet, uh, from uh, from. Uh, soya beans uh, and uh, these these crops are performed much better versus 2018 and uh, here we actually achieved much better results per hectare of this mixed cash crops uh, plus 360 percent on top of it uh, so 90 euros in 2018 uh, and 320 euros in in 2019. In total, a gross profit uh, of uh, of uh, growing segment, including the result of sales of agriculture produce, uh, gain on losses or on changes in fair value of biological assets and agriculture subsidies, amounted to approximately 11.32 million in 2019, compared with 4.29 million the year before. And uh, here, uh, actually, uh, this is uh, like uh, already Eamon has said that this is our main impact on our group's uh, gross profit uh, uh, we delivered this year. Mushroom growing segment. Uh, mushroom growing segment uh, represents one of our group's uh, uh, historical uh, businesses, which we are, uh, this is, is uh, we can say that this is a stable business and uh, with a little bit imp imp improvement on uh, brutal profitability and uh, on better prices, on a little bit better more sales. So total volume of mushrooms, uh, what we're producing, uh, is this, uh, is this, uh, more or less uh, we have the same. I remain the stable because production capacity is, uh, is uh, we are on the same level. We are 100% fully loaded, and uh, the sales of the volume of organic mushrooms since increased uh, by 5%. Here, our comp uh, here is our goal is uh, to increase this proportion uh, in future. But uh, uh, this year, uh, this was huge demand for uh, for uh, for fresh market mushrooms and uh, we we need to fulfill these requirements of uh, customers which uh, requested more mushrooms like year before and uh, part of uh, mushrooms which we sold uh, to uh, for processing of uh, organic mushrooms we need to transfer to the fresh market and then uh, the part of organic share is not representing what we are producing in organic because part of mushrooms will was uh, used uh, to sell for fresh market and um, in the prices, uh, prices on uh, non-organic mushrooms increased at 10% uh, since the share of the fresh mushrooms, which uh, actually we have better price, uh, increased compared with mushrooms uh, sold to processors. Uh, at the same moment, uh, the cost uh, to produce these uh, fresh mushrooms is also higher because uh, on fresh market you need on uh, you need to deliver it to customer, you need to pack it, you need to wrap, uh, you need to sort, uh, and there are extra costs related to to deliver it to fresh market and uh, the cost uh, uh, proportionally also increased in mushroom segment uh, from one point uh, from uh, from uh, from 22.3 million to 23.7 millions but in total uh, mushrooms sector performed better this year and the gross profit uh, grows from 1.7 million euros uh, to 2.5 close to 2.5 million euros and um, uh, and average prices of sold mushrooms uh, is was increased uh, approximately 9% and the cost uh, of so all the sold mushrooms uh, was increased by by 5% we see the mushrooms still is like a very stable part of our business, uh, which is generating uh, positive cash flows uh, every year, and uh, it's uh, we will keep uh, keep imp keep uh, going for improvement and efficiency to 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 cover our growing cost in the labor costs and um, uh, and uh, by increasing the share of organic uh, mushrooms in the proportions uh, which we are actually. 
much better prices uh, versus um, not organic mushrooms uh, so we want uh, to achieve uh, to achieve the better profitability gross margin also this year so our next segment is uh, the re segment and talking about our dairy segment, uh, our dairy segment sales revenues uh, for 2019 amounted to 10.14 million euros and was around 30% higher comparing to the same period last year. Uh, dairy segment sales comprise of uh, sales of milk and cattle. Uh, sales of milk increased uh, Due to both um, sales, due to both um, increase in volume of produced milk, which is which increased by eight percent, and uh, increase in average prices of sold milk, which increased due to uh, incre uh, due to our share uh, with uh, which is which was uh, sold with organic price premium increased from. Uh, I mean, uh, the share from uh, from the whole milk sold with organic premium increased from 46% in 2018 to 74% in 2019. These two effects both contributed uh, to 1.18 million increase uh, in sales revenues. Uh, sales of cattle decreased a little bit, um, not much, by 0.1 million. Which was uh, which happened due to lower quantity and uh, price of salt cattle. So getting back to milk uh, and talking about the the volume of milk, we sold to a, a total of 24.5 thousand tons, which is equivalent to 19.73 kilos per cow per day. Uh, and comparing to the last year. Uh, when it was 18.43 uh, kilograms per cow per day. So uh, we are getting a better efficiency from our cows, uh, which is affected by a different uh, feed mix and uh, better uh, uh, cow living. Uh, the average price of salt milk was around 385 euros per ton in 2019 and was 7% higher comparing to the same uh, period last year when it was 359 euros per ton. Um, uh, talking about our uh, aim to, uh, to increase our uh, to, to continue our milk uh, share with organic price premium increase, we are planning to uh, certify uh, our organic milk production uh, with Chinese, Chinese organic farming requirements. And uh, this, uh, these requirements takes uh, much time because the Chinese certifies the whole line of uh, milk, the, starting from the cow uh, and ending with the with the milk in the bottle, so we it took it took more time than we expected, but now we are planning to have it finished in the second quarter of 2020. So uh, if we uh, now at the last quarter we are we are selling around 90% of organic milk, uh, we are planning to increase it to to a maximum number. Talking about our next segment, uh, it's end consumer packaged goods or FMCG, fast moving consumer goods in other words. So the total revenues of uh, the segment amounted to 2.79 million in 2019 comparing to 1.86 million in a year earlier. This was an increase of 50% and uh, it's uh, one of the one of the reasons would be that uh, we went into agreement with a few retailers in uh, and we began supplying the U.S. market, 
uh, also we have negotiations with other retailers uh, I mean more retailers in the US and uh, we also are planning to export in other chains and other current countries as well and uh, 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 as you can see the 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 main increase and the main uh, uh, goer of this uh, segment is uh, preserved products and especially ready to eat organic soups which remain the main export products in this segment and uh, about our operating expenses so our operating expenses in 2019 amounted to 11.5 million uh, while the operating expenses in 2018 amounted to 10.35 million the operating expenses of 2019 increased mostly uh, due to provision of almost 2 million euros made to deposits of sanctions by the national payment agency as per lithuanian rural development program uh, measure organic farming the group uh, did did not comply with a requirement to sow perennial grasses grass crops in each of declared fields for at least one year but not more than two years per five-year period of the program so the group the group does not have enough information whether the sanctions would be applied or not and uh, what could be the total amount of these sanctions therefore we made a provision uh, based solely on our own calculations uh, so and we also as we were not fully sure uh, whether these sanctions will be applied uh, we decided to be conservative and to add uh, this calculation in our own uh, additionally talking about the change from previous year uh, group also started accounting for share based payments for employees which affected the operating expenses by 0 0.24 million euros uh, these uh, share based payments are equity settled only and does not have any influence on the group's cash flows uh, about the 2018 uh, there were also some uh, one-off effects uh, which was uh, determination of Arginta engineering purchase agreement that was a 0 0.72 million euros uh, if we would eliminate uh, these uh, one-off effects from both years uh, I mean the fines in previous year of 2018 and the sanctions of 2019 and uh, also if we would exclude uh, uh, non-cash expenses like depreciation impairments and uh, other things from both years we can say that uh, the group managed to say at the similar operating expenses level uh, between these two years uh, so eliminating all these things uh, i mentioned in 2018 would would have 2019 we would have a 8.2 million of uh, actual cash operating expenses and comparing to 2018 when we had 8.35 million of uh, these direct operating expenses Okay, Mr. Yushchus, Mr. Gudonis, thank you very much for your presentation. So we can open up for Q&A. And before that, I would like to remind that you can still send in questions in the section on the right side of the screen. So we have the first question how your FMCG exports will look in next few years. Okay, so I guess just I will answer this question. So at the moment, uh, we are like a group, uh, we are exporting uh, the, our sales uh, volumes uh, and, uh, and, and uh, is growing 
last year grow 50 percent per year and uh, our aim is to grow at least with this number uh, and um, especially especially because uh, we open it freshly only third quarter we just started exports uh, to united states markets uh, which we waited for 1.5 years uh, to fulfill the regulations of united states you food uh, food requirement uh, requirements uh, certific and certifications for united states market and uh, we have uh, already prepared for 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 grow in this market and um, secondly that uh, our uh, our our uh, chinese certification uh, which is actually is, uh, is under and the developing process at the moment and the finalization process is uh, allows us uh, to to export uh, milk products, uh, which at the moment uh, the part of uh, milk products sold is very little, and uh, and uh, to China uh, you can export not raw milk, but you must to sell it in the bottles and packed uh, packed products. And uh, here we see a huge potential uh, for, the, for our products because the buying price for regular conventional milk in China is even higher, like uh, we uh, we're getting here for organic milk in Europe. And um, but at the moment we don't want to give a certain numbers because like I, like I said it depends from fed uh, fed parties authorities uh, certification agencies and uh, but uh, i think uh, long term uh, not long term is next few years it will be the largest growing segment in our group portfolio thank you very much Uh, next question is the following. Do you see any impact of coronavirus to trade? Yeah, it's quite uh, quite a hot thematic, I see. <laughs> so, um, we are reporting now 12 years results. So, this is uh, after an end of this year, this was not yet any impact uh, for our trade and our sales. Uh, but uh, if you're looking, uh, our business model is uh, uh, this is actually is, is very important that our business is long term business, but uh, it doesn't matter what happens, people all outside. Uh, or inside homes, uh, we still need food, and uh, and uh, it will be continuously, continuously buying the food, and uh, the demand always will be here. Um, uh, the fluctuation between uh, between uh, between weeks uh, uh, could happen, uh, but uh, it's mainly on uh, products which you have the very long shelf life. In this last few weeks, probably was more demand for uh, for processed food uh, because people trying to make some storages. And uh, but uh, um, it's uh, anyway. So if it looks like on year annual basis, uh, the consumption uh, it's very stable and uh, and. Um, our demand for our products will be stable, and uh, the coronavirus, uh, if it impacts, uh, this is, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, this is a sector where we'll, I, we think that this will be the low, lowest impact uh, on on the sector. Thank you very much. So there are no more questions and the record of the presentation will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel webinar playlist and the company's website auga.lt. Dear guests, thank you very much for your presentation, answers given and your time. Participant, thank you for joining and have a good day.